discussion, we will discuss about actin filament first, then intermediate, then microtubule. So now let us talk about the actin filament and actin filament assembly. As we can see, actin filament is a polymer. It's a linear polymer, and this polymer is made up with actin fibers. So we have a protein called actin. This actin protein, these actin proteins are arranged together like a coil-like structure, and they finally make something like that. So you can see this is not a straight uh, structure like that but it is twisted, slightly twisted that you can see if we track their movement that twisting we can see is like that. So this is zigzag twisting we can find uh, in whole structure of actin filament. And this actin filament if we zoom into a particular actin protein then you can find something st a structure like that. In this structure we can see several regions are made up with alpha helices and several regions are made up with beta sheets and these alpha helices and beta sheets are joined together via these loops and in between them what we can find is the ATP binding site and this is really very important because uh, an actin protein along with the ATP bind state is very very active and uh, an actin protein along with the bind of ADP is not that much active. So this drives uh, the formation of actin filament. Whenever actin protein is bound with ATP, it is very very much necessary to attach with uh, another actin to make a polymer. And whenever this ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, then this actin filament, actin protein becomes uh, really really unstable. They will be dissociated. So that's how the whole thing is worked. So what happens uh, uh, during this actin assembly in very first place that the first few actin proteins come together, few actin along with ATP come together to form a core. We call it a actin nucleus. So actin nucleus is formed. After the formation of actin nucleus, then another sets of different actin proteins come in and they will attach. And so not only one actin protein singly come in, but normally you can see here in this picture too, two actin proteins along with each other come in and join to this side. So we call it the actin dimer. So actin dimers will come in and they will bind with each other after the nucleation event to carry this out. So this in this picture what we can see, suppose the nucleation system goes on particular place like here and then what happens, uh, actin along with ATP come in and uh, they bind to elongate this actin fiber and the direction it elongates we call the positive direction so this is nothing to do with any charge or anything like that but we call it because in this direction the actin fiber is getting made so new actin comes in and attached with this this end that's why it's called the plus end or positive end okay and in in the in opposite end it's it will be it is called the negative end uh, in this opposite end these actin dimers are getting dissociated because actin dimers are most of the time actin dimers are getting dissociated but a concept that most of the student mis uh, misunderstand is that in, they thought that this in positive end always uh, the polymerization occurs in negative end always the depolymerization occurs but that, that that is not only the case that is one of the case but is that is not only the case because in negative side also actin assembly is going on but the, the 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 rate of actin assembly in the negative side is much much lower than the rate of assembly at the positive side and similarly the late rate of disassembly at the positive side is much much lower than the rate of disassembly at the negative side okay so what we've made we have made this nucleus and then then finally the attachment and detachment is going on and what we can see here uh, here is uh, our um, uh, first step and then uh, future round of uh, actin come in and bind with each other so new actins will bind with each other and this this part of the actin move to the middle point now again after um, Furthermore, addition of actin, this will move to here, and these are the new actins in this positive side. So, what what was started from here will move to this place. So, this action is called the trade milling. Like a trade mill, what we can we have to run through this trade mill like that. So, if we start a position or begin here, then after addition of future further, uh, so in this position, these actins are new. After further addition of actin, this new actin become old actin. That's what. So going on all the time. Okay. Okay. 
Now let's talk about the assembly curve of this actin. So if you can see here, uh, we can notice that this uh, actin subunits are they are here pre placed here, and here are uh, they can form the nucleus. And after formation of this nucleus, more and more actin will come in and join together, and finally make the actin filament. Okay, and this is the actin filament formation. And what we can see in the very first step it is the lag phase or no actin uh, filament occur in this place but after further round the nucleation has been done after the nucleation we can see a rapid increase in this polymerization we call it a log phase and after this log phase when uh, actin filament is built after the dissociation and uh, association event uh, it must definitely association is getting higher than dissociation it has to be done because of this polymerization event to occur and after occurring uh, this association uh, thing then whole system becomes stagnant or become constant so in this state we can say the polymerization reaches an equilibrium or a st in a steady state and in this con condition the concentration of the actin protein at the steady state is called the critical concentration or C sub C. This critical concentration is very very much important. If the critical concentration, if the concentration of uh, free uh, uh, free actins uh, are lower than the critical concentration, then these actins will come in and polymerize it furthermore. If it is higher than the critical concentration, then the actin filament will get dissociated and free actin five uh, proteins are getting released into the environment. That is the basic concept. Okay, so okay, okay. Now let's look at uh, the actin filament uh, animation, actin filament assembly. So, if we think that these are the actin actin proteins uh, denoted with this uh, ball-like structures, and this yellow part are the ATP binding region so actin with ATP binding region are there so mo different many actin proteins come together and they will attach with each other to make the nucleus so after the formation of nucleus they start to add more and more actin towards a particular end and it is getting higher in, in a particular end and it is getting lower in uh, other end uh, the end it is getting higher is called the positive end and the end it is getting lower is will be called the negative end now after few round of this addition and dissociation it will finally reach and make a polymerized actin filament but now let's the critical concentration to have the game now if we look after zoom in the view so if the if, if it reaches the critical concentration then actin filament will uh, be having a steady state so if this critical concentration is getting higher so it, if the concentration of actin filament is getting high the critical concentration then this uh, uh, simple actin proteins will go any longer and if it is getting lower than the critical concentration then uh, some of the actin proteins get dissociated from the actin filament to balance uh, the concentration of the actin filament actin proteins outside that's the basic view okay now let's come into uh, uh, the regulation of this actin filament assembly if you can see this is the actin protein this is the actin filament this actin filament production from this actin uh, subunits uh, is tightly controlled uh, via different or it can be regulated it can be uh, what we can say uh, affected by different presence of different kinds of proteins so different proteins some of the proteins will help to polymerize actin some of the proteins do not help some of the protein help to destabilize this actin fiber okay so if you look here in this picture so let me change the color into blue okay now here we have a protein called formin if you look in in this case this formin uh, nucleates the assembly of uh, assembly and association of the growing growing actin filaments so if we if uh, it at attaches with formin if the formin present in a cell during the assembly of actin filament it helps uh, the cell to make actin filament and more rapidly production of actin filament and much more stronger actin filaments okay in other case if it has the arp complex then it helps the nucleus and assembly to form a web and remains associated with the minus a and so what happens if it produces uh, if if it attaches with the arp complex it's another protein complex arp so this arp protein complex will bind uh, to this uh, to this uh, growing filament 
section and after binding uh, it will uh, it will help to make a web network a web like network of an actin filament so it ag it again is helping uh, the actin filament to grow up but to make a web like structure but in case of forming forming help uh, in uh, the actin filamentation via the production of straight chain filaments but in case of arp complex it is making the web uh, sorry a uh, web like structure okay now uh, if it has a um, thymosin uh, uh, sorry if it has a proline first uh, talk about proline so if a proline protein associated with this actin subunits then the, this binding of proline speeds up the elongation process of uh, the production of this chain so it will speed up the elongation that means the much more uh, actin along with pro proline profilin sorry profilin will come and bind with the positive end and it will elongate uh, the chain of actin filament but in uh, another turn if, if it bind with the thymosin which is another uh, one type of thymosin is called the thymosin beta 4 this thymosin will come in and bind with the subunit of actin filament and it will prevent the assembly so what we can see we have the actin subunit which are the monomer to make a polymer of actin filament now along with uh, the attachment of different protein molecules uh, they have different effects so if it attaches with formin or arp complex then they can use uh, with each other to make a stack of actin filaments in case of attachment to formin it will make a stack of bundle like actin assembly in case of make of arp it will make a web like assembly in case of binding to profilin molecule uh, it will elongate really really faster and in case of binding with thymosin the elongation will stop and it will go through the disassembly or it, it, it will block the assembly of the molecule it is in one turn now if we consider the matter with actin filament now let's think about the actin filament and how actin filament will react with attaching with all these different types of molecules if actin filament attaches with cofilin so cofilin molecule come and attach with actin filament then what happens it binds the ATP ADP actin filament and accelerates disassembly so in this case cofilin molecule will come and helps this actin filament to disassemble so remember all this profilin cofilin formin thymosin beta 4 and all these things are working together to to have a dynamic stability between this subunit form of actin and actin chain form so the, the, there is uh, this is a reaction if you can see from a monomer to polymer for it's a polymerization reaction in this polymerization reaction is having a different effector molecules and these all proteins are acting like effector molecules so cofilin will bind and helps in disassembly in, in the same uh, consequence if you have gel solin it uh, is uh, served the filament and uh, binds to the plus end and it uh, sever the filaments okay and if it binds to the capping protein that prevents the assembly and disassembly at the plus terminal so capping protein binding will restrict its growth but uh, that means it will tell the cell that the it is uh, the, the the length of the actin filament reaches the appropriate one so if it needs to be the actin fiber for 10 uh, for suppose for example uh, few nanometer uh, 100 nanometer suppose so it reaches the 100 nanometer then a cap protein will come in and attach to the positive side end it will tell the cell that no longer you, you, you should stop now the growth of the actin filament because it reaches the amount it reaches the length it has to be reached okay so this is the concept of capping protein and also tropomyosin is an important protein that stabilizes the filament so if tropomyosin come in and bind with this filament uh, actin filament state it will stabilizes the filament so there are lots of different proteins are working but remember one thing they are all working to be to maintain the balance between the actin subunit as well as the actin filament construction okay now uh, here are different arrangement of uh, these actin filaments they can arrange like this fimbrin structure they can arrange like this filamine structure which is a wave like structure due to the help of arp complex they can attach with the spectrin structure this is another j network of meshy uh, actin filaments and as well as they can form in this erm structure so there are lots of different structural variety that an actin filament can achieve because an actin filament is abundant in nature it, it, it can easily be achieved all these things that's why now you can say why they use uh, this 
actin filaments in such a different uh, purposes and why we can find this actin filament in abundant nature in the cell because the actin can be modified into different things so actin if you have actin you can use this to modulate different things you can use this to maintain different things and you can use this to do different works in in a cell so th these are the different cross linking uh, and attachment of membranes you can in a membrane we can see so it helps the cell membrane to get integrated it helps the cell to maintain its structure to regulate its structure it also helps the cell to mo to to be motile to to get into a particular direction very very clearly so that's all the work of an actin filament so actin filament is very very important for a cell